right, she was seven. I'm back. So I had a video request to do a topic of how to know when your relationship is over, when to leave. Okay. All this depends on certain things. Are you married? Are you just in a relationship? Do you have children? Um, are you being provided for? Are you the provider? Okay, so let's just take an example of each. So first off, if you're just in a relationship, no kids, no one's providing for anybody, everyone's equal. You know when it's time to leave, when you don't see yourself with that person in five years, um, the way that they are currently now. Uh, if you can't imagine your life with somebody in five years, then that's probably not the person for you. If you have been with someone and they keep repeating patterns that are not beneficial to the relationship and is basically dragging you down or draining you emotionally, that's a, t uh, that's a red flag for you to get out the relationship because can you imagine five years of that and how much time and energy you will lose how much of your youth you will lose wasting on someone who is not going to be there you know in the long run so I tend to think that entering into a relationship the first year of that relationship is kind of you know all the red flags will come up you'll know if this person is responsible you'll know if they have their priorities in order You'll know if they are good with money. You'll know all these things. And if you, you know, see yourself with this person in the long run because all those things, you know, are good, then by all means stay in the relationship. But if you see your relationship at headed, you know, for a cliff, jump off before y'all both fall, okay? Um, a lot of people make decisions based on emotion when it comes to relationships but this is a big part of your life this is a major decision in your life this affects the rest of your life and if you're making those very important decisions based on emotion and not logic then you're probably going to kind of make the wrong decision okay so when you go to buy a house or a car or apply to a school you look at things logically you look at numbers you look at you know um, statistics you look at all the things on paper before you make a big decision okay you check out the neighborhood you check out the, the um, you know if this car lasts or not if it has a warranty if this this, this and that but some people will just hop right into a relationship and stay there even though it's unstable it has no equity which means no future and it has no value to one of the persons in the relationship and you'll stay there just because you're emotionally attached that's like finding a house that's your perfect dream house just beautiful has everything you want in it and in a cheap price okay you're about to you're about to go close on this house but then you realize it's in a very bad neighborhood and very unsafe and that's why it's so cheap do you continue do you close on the house do you buy the house even though your security is at stake your life is basically at risk the value of your home is not going to be as much because of the neighborhood it's in are you still going to go forward and purchase that house probably not right it's the same thing when you when you find a car let's say you're, you're you're shopping for a car you find a used car you find a really nice luxury vehicle but it has like all these miles on it it's been in an accident but it's been repaired so no one could tell it's been in an accident um, there's no warranty left on it it's expensive so you know the maintenance is going to be expensive the parts are expensive so if you break down guess what it's coming out of your pocket the insurance on it is high, so there you got to go up there. But the car is nice, and it brings up your status, and you know it's your dream car. Even though it's a few years older, and it's like you know no one, the body style hasn't changed, and you can get away with it if you really just want it to be flashy 
and show off. Would you buy that car knowing that it could break down any day, you couldn't afford to fix it, and all your money just went into it? Would you invest in that vehicle or would you opt for a more reliable vehicle that's nice as well, but you're going to be paying more for quality than you are for flash? Which one are you going to choose? Now, a lot of people are going to choose based off their emotion and what the outside world thinks about whatever, okay? That's why you'll see a lot of broke people with nice cars sitting in their driveway of, you know, a roach infested apartment. That's why you'll see a lot of people living, uh, you know, in a, in a bad neighborhood in a, in, a, in a decent house because instead of investing in their security and safety, they would rather have the big flashy house and risk getting shot. <laughs> okay. There are neighborhoods like that, by the way, if y'all know. Yes. Okay. I was looking at houses um, a while ago and their perfect house popped up. I'm like, this is everything we need. Oh my God, look at this part. Straight up by the bad side of town where people get robbed and shot daily. Okay. It was a newly built house. So you would think it would be in a newly built neighborhood, but basically what happened is they tore another lot down and built this house up and big mistake okay so basically what I'm saying is it's time to leave your relationship when the stability is not going to be there in your future if there's no equity in it if it's not really worth your investment on paper okay you can fall in love and feel giddy and uh, passionate and um, you know all school girl crush school boy crush with anyone that's new and looks good that's just anybody okay but what you can't have is two people who are going to make logical decisions together who make sense together who have their priorities in the correct order so if you are stuck in a relationship with someone who is like what we considered a loser and who's not doing anything with their lives and you realize now that that in love puppy love feeling has worn off and that this person is not who you wanted them to be or to turn into or it's not the person that you thought that they would be and you want out but you feel sorry for them because you invested all this time my advice for you is to sit down and have a talk say look I thought while I was like so deeply in love with you that you would become the man that I envision myself being with in the future, but you haven't even started on that journey yet. And you're not even close to it. You're not even trying to become that. And I'm going places and I need certain things in my life that you're not providing right now. And we've, you know, we've been back and forth. And I just think it's time for me to, to move on. I think I've outgrown you, okay? You can, you can say that you've outgrown that person. It's not a big deal. People outgrow each other every day. Or we've grown apart. We want two separate things. You know, tell them why you're leaving them. And hopefully it will help them make a decision on how to improve upon their life so that the next person that they come in contact with won't have to have that same talk with them. And if you're the person that's getting left, you know, if someone's breaking up with you because you're not doing anything with yourself, that should be a wake-up call to you. You know, people don't leave loving relationships for no reason, okay? People don't live leave loving relationships unless it's missing something, okay? People will cheat all through, up and through a relationship, but they won't leave it. The only time that people leave a relationship is when they're not benefited, benefiting from it anymore, okay? They don't feel whole, they don't feel fulfilled, they don't feel equal, they don't feel like, you know, you're offering them anything they can't get by themselves or from somebody else, but even more. So. It's time to leave a relationship when you're no longer being benefited by it emotionally, financially, or spiritually, you know. Some people grow spiritually and they have to leave their partner because their partner is still stuck in a certain mindset that the other person has evolved from and just doesn't work anymore. I, I have so many people come to me and saying, oh, I wish my partner would get on board with, you know, you know how I think and feel spiritually but they're just stuck here and let me tell y'all that's not really a good reason to leave anybody because you evolved and they didn't spiritually when y'all got into the relationship y'all were both on the same level 
and it could work to your advantage actually to have someone who's not as spiritual as you because they see things from a different perspective you know some people get real spiritual and real blinded or real paranoid or overly uh into conspiracy while the other person is still kind of grounded in the in the world and they see other things that are going on and they can keep you grounded as well as you can lift them and open their eyes on certain issues. So it's kind of good to have someone who's not just like you, okay? You don't want a twin. Like a lot of people ask me about twin flames. Twin flames are basically, they don't really incarnate on the earth at the same time. And if you met your twin flame, you would probably hate their guts because they'd be too much like you. Okay, you need a little bit of, of a difference, you know? So uh, I think it has become more of a term of endurement rather than what it really is okay so i would stop using that term so loosely and you know a lot of people use that but i don't use it because i know what it really means so when you meet the one for you or the one that was compatible with you then you're gonna know and you and if you have issues in that relationship you're gonna fight for it you're gonna stick through it because you see yourself in five years with this person like oh they're going places i'm not going nowhere i'm staying here Okay, oh no, no, she's, you know, she's a good woman. I know, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I, I know that we don't get along right now, but she has potential. She has a future. I see her in five years. Now, if you can't say this about your partner and you're just stuck in an unfulfilling relationship, it's time to go. Okay? I see um, a lot of people who are miserable in their relationships, but their partners have so much potential, they're not going nowhere. They're like, mm-mm. Just like that Beyonce song, you know, she going to be rocking chinchilla coats if I let you go. Basically, she's saying, if I let my man go, then he's going to be given, you know, all the stuff that I have, you know, endured and and worked towards with this man to another woman. I'm not leaving. I'm not going nowhere. Mm -mm. I've invested too much into this relationship to leave. So a lot of people feel like they've invested too much financially and as far as time and youth to actually leave the relationship. So either they find a way to work with it, to think differently about the relationship, to accept certain things about the relationship, or to see it in a whole new light, you know, for what it is. And detach either emotionally and use more logic, you know, treat it as a business. Because a lot of times that, that lovey-dovey puppy love stuff, hand-holding, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff wears off over time, you know, and you say, okay, look, why am I still here? This is why I'm here. This, 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 you can name a thousand reasons why you're still there and why it's benefiting you. So you're not going to break up with that relationship. But if you can name five things that's bringing you down, oh, my credit's getting bad. Oh, this, this, and that. He cheats. He beats me. He, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't spend time with the kids. You know, uh, he let the dog out and the dog got hit by a car. Uh, you know, it just name everything. Uh, he lost his job. Uh, he went to jail. Um, he got court fees. He has medical bills. We don't have insurance. If that's all up in your relationship, the time to leave is now. Okay. I know people say through thick and thin. But... How thin are you going to wear yourself? Okay. Sometimes self-preservation is the best option. Okay. Now, if you're if you're dealing with, uh, you know, someone who you fell in love with and that's why you married them or got into the relationship with because you truly love them and that love is worn off and there's nothing else, then of course you're going to be faster to leave than someone who entered into a relationship based on financial security because... They never went into the relationship for love in the first place. They went for that security. And until that security runs out, they don't really care. They're not going anywhere. They're like, whatever, whatever. I have to I marry you for love. I married you for money. So a lot of people will stay in relationships based on the reason they entered into them. Okay? You know, a lot of people see things from different perspectives. Oh, why do you stay with him? He does this to you. He cheats. He, he lies. He does this. He doesn't call. And then you'll see someone who calls and is honest, but... The lights are out and you're sitting in the dark with no food. Okay, so you got to make a decision. <laughs> um, people have certain reasons why they stay with their 
significant other. Um, some people will say, oh, I'm with a married man and I'm dating a married man and I can't leave him. I'm in love with him. But think about in five years, are you going to be with that man still? Is he going to find a new person, a new mistress? Is his wife going to find out? And if his wife finds out, takes everything from him and he can't even afford a mistress anymore, are you still going to want to be with him if he's like kicked out living in, you know, one bedroom apartment with you know a, a lesser car than he has now he can't take care of you or take you out are you still gonna love him um you know and i'm all for people doing what they want to do but when it's time to leave the relationship you gotta look for the red flags and look forward five years if it's not good bounce okay all right i hope that this helped someone and if you have any questions or you want to tell your story um, put in the comments.